Okay, what we're going to uh, now continue on is to look at this dispersion relation at its particular cutoff and resonance points. Now, pragmatically, uh, this is all covered in some detail in Chen, and he has a figure that I'm just going to repeat here. And I'm not going to go through all the mathematics to show you exactly uh, how all that goes. So let me just depict how that um, uh, goes. So uh, the idea is this is uh, figure uh, 4-36 of Chen. And what it is is for an X wave, extraordinary wave, uh, dispersion relation. in the form of uh, k squared, c squared over omega squared versus omega squared. It's a little different way of plotting these things. But we'll get it on here. So on the vertical, I, I'm sorry, we, this is to the minus 1. Um, so what we end up doing is, plot, is plotting um, omega squared over c squared, k squared. Uh, which is the phase velocity squared over c squared uh, versus omega. And I need to just kind of indicate a bunch of stuff, and then I'll sketch it in. So there's a, um, let's see, I'm going to need, um, Need some vertical lines here. Uh, and, and then I'm going to need uh, a, let's see, this one has to come down here and across. And now the, the question is uh, if you go back to this dispersion relation. Oh, and I need to mark a particular point on here, which is 1. Uh, this would be the phase velocity equal to the phase vo velocity of light. So we'll make some mark out through here. Um, it turns out that if you had, if we just look at back at our dispersion relation, um, the point at which the phase velocity is equal to the velocity of light is whenever, you know, this is 1, it's only 1, so all that's got to vanish. So that'll be the point at which we have the plasma frequency. Um, now, it's not so clear. Well, and another point of interest is that point at which k squared, the inverse of this, goes to 0, or I'm sorry, omega squared over c squared, k squared goes to 0, which would be the inverse of this goes to 0, which is, in fact, 1 over all of this would be the point at which omega is equal to omega hybrid, omega upper hybrid. And so those are our two points of interest. And then the two uh, singularity points here, um, Oh, by the way, I forgot I need the other part of the diagram out here. Um, there's two singularity points that we have uh, are what are called the uh, right-handed cutoff and the left-handed cutoff. Now, uh, you have to kind of go back through all of what we're talking about here. But let's remember that we were interested at the point of cutoffs and resonances. Let's talk about resonances first. Resonance was the point where k squared went to infinity. So if we look at our dispersion relation here, k squared goes to infinity at the point omega squared is equal to omega hybrid squared. So this point right here, omega is equal to omega hybrid, this is our resonance point. And you have to do some algebra, is all I can say. But there are these two frequencies, the so-called lower and upper hybrid frequencies. Um, and the idea is that for frequencies below the lower hybrid, k squared is negative. 
And so this is a cutoff region. which means, k, again, k squared is less than zero. A resonance means k squared goes to infinity. And then finally, there's also a, a non-pass band in here. And so this is also a range where cutoff k squared is less than zero. And these two uh, frequencies of interest are, um, write those, there, there is a relationship that omega right or left squared um, plus or minus omega omega c minus omega p squared is equal to zero determines these right and, and left handed cutoffs. So the idea is that if you you know, had a plasma propagating, I'm sorry, had a wave propagating in a plasma which had slight inhomogeneities compared to wavelengths of the magnetic field strength, which would be the cyclotron frequency and the plasma density in. Then as you propagate it along, imagining that all these frequencies were coming up and you're sitting at one frequency, you would first run into a cutoff region where the wave would not propagate then just as you were coming out of that, you would go to a region where K was not propagating, but it was infinite. Okay. Then you would go past that point, and you would come to K was dropping down from infinity, and there would be a propagating pass band. And then further on, you would find another cutoff or non-propagating damped modes. So the, the basic point of, of putting this up or commenting about it is then you can run into a, in a plasma, particularly in an inhomogeneous magnetized plasma, into various regions with cutoffs and resonances and so forth. And uh, it can get to be uh, very, very complicated. And we'll talk about that in a moment in the context of what's called the CMA diagram. Uh, we'll just sort of mention it more or less. Yeah. Why well, I've got the omega in which? In that, in that expression, why you've got an omega? It doesn't it seems to be Oh, actually, <laughs> it, it, why I've got an omega here, right there. Actually, it should be omega sub r or l. So it should have been one omega, but the two solutions are, um, maybe I should just leave that out and say the two solutions are then omega is equal to omega right and omega left. Uh, that, that's what I, the two positive solutions, I should say, actually. Um, okay, so now, uh, before we go on, so, so the moral to this story, oh, I'm sorry, there's one other uh, feature I wanted to mention, which was that this was the extraordinary wave, okay, and it's got very complicated, you know, cutoff regions, resonance, pass bands, and so forth. What if I had made the similar plot for an O ordinary wave dispersion relation? Well, it turns out um, that it uh, was just C squared K squared over omega squared is equal to 1 minus omega P squared over omega squared. And so if I make a plot of, it's much uh, duller, so to speak. If I make a plot of, uh, again, omega squared over c squared k squared, which is the inverse of this, and I've got some vertical line here, and this is omega, and the only interesting point is omega p. k squared never goes to infinity, except maybe for omega goes to zero, but that's not kind of a special case, and we're supposed to be at finite frequency here. Um, and rather, all I end up having is some dispersion relation that does this. I'm sorry, this goes up to here only. And this turns out to be a, a cutoff region. So again, this is the cutoff region for which k squared is less than zero the modes won't propagate. So 
modes only propagate for frequencies greater than the plasma frequency. And now again, let me come back to, if you want to make a microwave interferometer work, okay, this one is highly desirable using the O mode because there you polarize the wave to have the electric field along the magnetic field and it doesn't even know the magnetic field's there particularly. On the other hand, if you, you know, do an X mode, you propagate with the E field perpendicular to B and you imagine getting down in here, it gets to be very complicated uh, structure, let me just say it that way. Okay, so that's a little bit what I wanted to say about O modes and X modes, dispersion relations. Next thing I want to go on to is, is a kind of a special case of magnetohydrodynamic waves, which are the low frequency versions of all these, or MHD waves, or what do you want to call them. So um, they're often called magnetohydrodynamic. waves, and what we mean by that is they're fluid-like, so there'll be frequencies low compared to the cyclotron frequency, and uh, they are typically uh, electromagnetic in general, not, not usually electrostatic, and they can be uh, in various directions. And so the first one, so we, again, you end up considering various cases. Um, so first, uh, let's consider the special case of uh, K parallel to B naught. And so um, what we would particularly consider is then K vector is equal to K Z hat, um, and the electric field is then um, supposed to be perpendicular to K for an electromagnetic mode, so E tilde would be EX tilde X hat plus EY tilde Y hat. Now, uh, again, our dispersion relation, um, it turns out we only care about a fairly simple case here. And so uh, we will have only X and Y components. We won't worry about the Z component, so we can go back to the 2 by 2 matrix situation. And so what we'll end up with, it turns out, is for this case, is K squared minus omega squared over C squared, epsilon X, X hat, 0, 0, K squared. Um, I should have said this causes the summation over species of omega pj squared um, times epsilon xy goes to zero. Uh, causes the epsilon, well, maybe I should just leave that off. It causes the off diagonal, epsilon xy, to be zero, and, and epsilon yx to be zero. We talked about that last time, so we'll go back through it again. Uh, anyway, and omega squared over c squared epsilon yy hat. Uh, and this is then on ex tilde EY tilde equals 0, 0. Again, the EZ tells us nothing interesting. Our particular dielectric constant in the low frequency limit, um, epsilon X X hat is epsilon naught times 1 uh, minus omega P E squared over omega squared minus omega C E squared and then minus omega pi squared over omega squared minus omega ci squared. But when I'm taking the limit that the frequency is low, I eliminate those two omega squareds in the denominator, and this becomes then epsilon naught 1 plus omega pi squared, omega pe squared, sorry, omega ce squared, and then plus omega pi squared over omega ci squared. And now, again, this one is of order ME over MI compared to the other one. And so this gives us epsilon naught 1 plus omega P 
I squared over omega C I squared. And if you go back to what we talked about a few lectures ago about the dielectric constant, this is 1 plus C squared over V alpha N squared. And this is epsilon. turns out it's also epsilon YY, epsilon XX hat. And uh, just notationally, I see that I should define that the alpha N speed is B naught over square root of mu naught rho mass. So this was the low frequency and dielectric constant that we talked about before. Now, so what kind of waves do we get out of this? Well, you can see that then our dispersion relation, so dispersion relation, Um, it's just going to be k squared minus omega squared over c squared times, um, actually it should be over epsilon naught, over epsilon naught, I see. Um, and so it should be 1 plus c squared over v alpha n squared. The dispersion relation is, again, the determinant of the 2 by 2. And then it's also k squared minus omega squared over c squared times 1 plus c squared over v alpha n squared. And usually we're not interested in the unity, which represents the dielectric constant of free space. We're, represented in, we're interested in the, the, the uh, c squared over v alpha n squared, which represents the plasma response. Now, this being the case, then you neglect that, and then you can neglect the c squareds, okay? And so what you end up with out of all this is then that you have omega squared minus k squared v alpha n squared times omega squared minus k squared v alpha n squared equals zero, or omega squared is equal to k squared v alpha n squared a kind of degenerate sort of wave. Now, let's look at what kinds of waves these are. So here was a magnetic field, B tilde. Um, we said that we wanted the K vector to be along B. So K vector is along that direction. But we wanted the electric field vector to be perpendicular. Okay. Now, which direction is the magnetic perturbation caused by these particular waves then? Well, if it's supposed to be an electromagnetic wave, then we would have, by Faraday's induction law, curl B is equal to minus, I'm sorry, curl E is equal to minus dB dt. You remember when we take the E to the, uh, we assume a wave-like form, this gives us I K cross E tilde is equal to minus I. It becomes I omega um, B tilde. Or alternatively, we find that B tilde is equal to uh, 1 over omega K cross E tilde. So the B tilde, the magnetic perturbation in these waves, you know, they're wiggling along, is in a direction perpendicular to both K and E tilde. Okay, so that means that our B tilde is in some perpendicular direction, and in particular, it's perpendicular to the original magnetic field. So these particular waves that have K along the B field are called torsional or shear alpha waves. And they're called torsional because the B field that goes with it wiggles the direction of the field line. Okay, or twists the field lines. So, the, uh, so these are called these ones for which uh, our direction of K is in the in the B direction. So they're called torsional or shear alpha waves. Now. We can also have another class of waves, which I 
won't uh, work out in detail. Um, so we can also consider cases for which um, we ha uh, consider MHD, magnetohydrodynamic waves, with K perpendicular to B naught. Okay. And then it turns out that we will, the dispersion relation, which is given in Chen 4 142, he works out equation Chen. Um, what he works out is that he get omega squared over k squared is equal to c squared v sound squared plus v alphane squared divided by c squared plus v alphane squared. Um, and we're often in the case where the alphane speed is below the velocity of light, so this then approximately equal to the sound speed squared plus the alphane speed squared. And that's surely greater than the alphane speed or the sound speed, either one. Um, and in this case, then we have a magnetic field here. And it turns out you can show that these particular waves have a B parallel tilde. So they have a, uh, because they have a, a K in this direction, okay, and an E in the perpendicular direction, another in the E perp tilde direction, then K cross E will have a component in the direction of the equilibrium magnetic field. So these modes are often called compressional alphane waves, compressional or decompressional, because they intensify the magnetic field by adding to it its magnitude or unadding to it. So these are so-called compressional. Um, the pen's not working too well here. So, so these are compressional. Maybe I should say or decompression. Yeah, get a better pen here. Uh, alphane waves. And they're also called, okay, because they're sort of sonic waves, if the alphane speed weren't here, but they're a combination of magnetic perturbation at the alphane speed and sound speeds propagating at the sound speed. So they're also called magnetosonic waves. And you can also derive them more directly from, um, from just fluid-like uh, models of the plasmas. But uh, we won't end up doing that. Okay, now, so this has been some sort of a sense of what all this business is about. Believe it or not, we've only touched the easy parts, okay? Because we took particular directions, perpendicular to the field or parallel to the magnetic field not at some arbitrary direction, you know, some mix of parallel and perpendicular to the magnetic field. So for general, let's just say, um, k vector equals, let's say, k parallel z hat plus, you know, kx or k perp x hat, um, it turns out then you get very complicated dispersion relations, let's just say. And what people have done is uh, arrange a certain diagram after that's, uh, the inventors of parts of it, uh, Klemov, Malali, and Alice. Uh, it's a so-called CMA diagram. And they make a plot of omega C over omega versus uh, omega P squared over omega squared. So this is proportional to density, and this is proportional to the magnetic field. And then it has various, you know, structure in it and all kinds of resonances and so forth and so on. But any one diagram in here, um, for example, in the lowest one down here, um, you can look at the waves in terms of their phase velocities. These directions are like the phase velocities. And here would be an X mode, an O mode 
and a left-handed cutoff and a right-handed cutoff. And the idea is that these little diagrams, the length of them are proportional to the phase speed. And we don't, I won't go through this in great detail, and uh, so the best idea is just uh, see the last uh, section of Chen Chapter 5, and also uh, and Appendix B. And we won't uh, go into this in any greater detail. Let me just say in uh, Course 724, uh, you go into this in, in a good bit <clears throat> more detail. And if you actually try to calculate propagation of waves in an inhomogeneous plasma in some direction to the magnetic field, some angle, uh, you have to go into that. So next time what we'll do is we'll start into Chapter 5, uh, discussion of diffusion and, and uh, resistivity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh.